Hi, my name is John Weisenfeld. I'm a science teacher in Pasco, Washington. I shared this PDF with folks and it looks like 288 of you clicked on it in the past couple days. And so let me tell you how I made it. I'm using Adobe Acrobat Pro DC. That's the new subscription Adobe Acrobat. Uh, it's called the 2015 release, continuous version 2015.10. Haven't tested any other Adobe Acrobat Pro um, files. Haven't tested whether this is compatible with any of your uh, other Acrobat Pro. But uh, I'm pretty sure that if you make it in Adobe Acrobat Pro latest version, it should be readable in the latest version of Adobe Acrobat Reader. So let's get started. Um, I opened the file from that link and I didn't password protect it so potentially you all should be able to edit it. Um, once you open it you should go into tools and find the prepare form submenu of tools. That lets you create here in the toolbar um, text fields, check boxes, radio buttons, etc. If I zoom in on um, the PDF here, you'll see that I have a text box that's called Climber Mass. And the general idea is uh, when you click the button here called Randomize, uh, the values for these text boxes is set according to some JavaScript that is attached to the button. I have the text fields in a couple of places on the document as well as in the answer key I have some I have those fields again and especially fields that don't show up on the student document so okay so let's dig in the the text boxes for instance for climber mass it's just a general text field nothing special uh, no actions no validation no calculations etc so pretty basic a, a lot of room there for probably changing that as time goes on so let's just think about the climber mass since we also want to find the tension in the rope, the tension in the rope is the climber mass times the the gravitational field strength, so 10 meters per second squared. So let's just walk through that single part of the code. I have a rubric here for the students to see. I've gotten feedback that they like to see the rubric before they take the uh, test or quiz. Uh, it's a little bit of a headache for me because I sometimes think of stuff I want to add it later, but anyway. Then I have the answer key, which is the rubric again. So imagine I create a version for every one of my students. I give them the test and the rubric. Then I file away in my gradebook or my paper files the answer key for the student. And I um, identify each student's version by a combination of the uh, random numbers that I get that get generated. That's a quality control for me to see if I'm truly getting kind of a random distribution of numbers, and it's also a way of uniquely identifying them when they hand them in. So it, I can do the, the I can connect the version with the student. Uh, I have also recently been able to give my students a sample version of some tests or quizzes, of course with different random numbers, to help them prepare or study for the test or the quiz. The, the, the benefit of that is that uh, they tend to do better on the quizzes and tests, as you might imagine, but the drawback is some of them have downloaded the samples and tried to turn them in as their quiz. So I put a watermark on my sample quizzes so they don't do that anymore. 
Main part of the code is in, under the randomized button, so click here to generate random numbers. Let's look at uh, properties. It is a button. It has a tooltip. It has a name. Notice that the name doesn't show up uh, in the field or in the form. So I haven't figured out how to fix that yet. I'm looking through the tabs here. I didn't change any of this stuff here on the button properties. I suppose you can make things more fancy or interesting. But uh, the meat of the, the code in the form happens on a mouse up event on the randomize button. It executes a menu item. And, well, actually it runs a JavaScript. Here are all the things you can do. You can reset a form, you can show or hide a field, you can submit a form. Uh, interesting idea there, just say give an online quiz or an electronic quiz and let students submit their answers and then you can grade them somehow automatically. I haven't thought about that, but I suppose that there's some learning management systems that let you do that. So it stands to reason. Go here to the mouse up event, it runs a JavaScript, and now here's the code. So let's walk through it a little bit here. I first uh, set up some variables. And this code I will put in the comments here of this YouTube video. So let me, um, every time you make a random number, you'd like to set the minimum. Because uh, all random numbers are generated on a real number interval from 0 to 1. I think inclusive. Yeah. So what you'll do is you'll scale that up to some reasonable number. So I figured a, a good range of random numbers for the climber mass uh, was 60. I thought that a good minimum climber mass would be maybe 30. That's probably way too light, but you get the general idea. You can set the classmate mass, uh, the, min, the range of the classmate mass, min and range, and then uh, min and range table weight. So, you know, anytime you've got a random number, one way to do it is to just set up a range of values that you'd like to pick from. So now this code, I think this code I stole from uh, an internet site, an Adobe forum, which basically says uh, climber mass value, val, that's the internal value. It is the value behind the climber mass text field. So uh, just to my naming convention, just to make a few, uh, just to make that clear. You take the floor, so you want to um, grab the um, floor is going to round down, basically, of the random function scaled up by the climber mass range and then uh, so that's going to be 0 to 1 times climber mass range so 0 to 60 in this case and then add the minimum climber mass so your max climber mass will be 90 your min will be 30 and you can expect uh, some you know as good as the random number variable generator random number generator is in JavaScript you can expect things to be fairly reasonable uh, then, of course, the rope tension val is the climber mass val times gravity. So that's just a straight calculation. And then U. So once you've generated numbers, in order to put them into fields, you would say this dot, so this, a pointer or reference to the document you're in, get a certain field in the document. This is the name of the field you created and then dot value to set the value in that field which uh, then gets displayed so uh, that's the basic idea I set uh, classmate weight again times gravity I set rope tension I grab a random number for table weight grab a random number for classmate mass calculate the normal force on the table by the floor which is your classmate weight plus your table weight Anyway, I won't bore you with the physics. You know the physics. So then uh, I can put in the answer fields here the values so that I can see them in my answer key. So once you define your logic, you've done the physics, the equations are set in the JavaScript, you can just plug in any numbers you want. So my reason for doing this 
was to make students think about the physics and not about the numbers, but yet change the numbers so that none of them thinks they know the physics just by copying numbers from their neighbor. I use this uh, quiz as kind of a semi-collaborative uh, opportunity for students, and then uh, I allow students more freely to take quizzes home or to do retakes on their own time because um, they really need to do some work behind them. I love the fact that my quizzes don't get stale from year to year or month to month or week to week. And I love the fact that students know that they can't just sit there and blindly copy. So uh, that's how I did it. Feel free to post comments or send questions to me at my email. Uh, I'll put it in the comments. So enjoy. Happy. Oh, so let's uh, almost signed off there. So hit OK to... Um, if you change your code, hit close. To preview this, hit the preview button under the prepare form work um, toolbar, and you'll be able to basically see how your code is running. So I'm clicking this, I'm seeing the button change state, I'm getting different numbers for um, classmate mass, table uh, weight. And then down in my answer key, I'm seeing those numbers come up as you might expect. Uh, there's also, yeah, uh, you can save this, you can print this, you can send it to other people. Um, and uh, the code is probably the, the basic uh, thing that you wanted to see. But that's a general idea. Enjoy.